Just over a decade ago, Nelson Mandela Bay narrowly avoided completely running out of water following a devastating drought. A few years later, Cape Town faced its own day zero, but a massive water-saving campaign kept the mother city from the brink of disaster long enough for last-minute rain to eventually save the day. Hard lessons were learnt, not least the need to save, 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 to ensure what little water is left lasts as long as possible. With history now repeating itself in Gabecha, it appears many, if not all, those lessons have been forgotten, perhaps even ignored. Here's Masa. Parts of the Eastern Cape gripped by severe drought. Dams supplying Nelson Mandela Metro fast running empty. Residents urged to drastically cut consumption. The region declared an official disaster area as national government steps in. The year 2010. Long before Cape Town's Day Zero Scare, the city formerly known as Port Elizabeth, now Kabecha, was facing dry taps. But through a series of interventions, they managed to avert that disaster. And recognizing the impact of climate change on the region's rainfall, plans were drafted to future-proof the supply of water for the region. Fast forward to 2022. While some of the country has been enjoying generous seasonal summer rains, the southern eastern Cape region remains dry. The warning signs of the past 12 years apparently largely ignored. As the sun hovers just below the horizon, the city of Kobecha awakens. But beneath this calm, idyllic exterior, there is a crisis in the making. The bay's water storage dams are at less than 12% capacity, and for the 1.5 million local residents, the threat of a real day zero scenario is right on their doorstep. Many suburbs and townships are already experiencing persistent water outages, forcing people to either buy water or collect it from water points. How long have you not had water? I think it's after it starts, May, April, May, June, June now. Mimi Snook lives in Guanobuche on the outskirts of the city. Every day she sets out with her bucket to look for water. This is quite heavy without the water. If I'm tired, I walk, stay next to the pavement, take a break, go, take a break, put in the floor, take a break. She patiently waits her turn at the Jojo tank. Fetching water is generally a chore for the children, but Mimi lives alone and she can only use what she can carry. The floors, washing dishes, and wash myself, everything. Through hardship, she has learned the value of water. Must put the dirty water, the washing water, another basin for use for the toilet. But it's very important the toilet. It's difficult. Don't rain. Must pray for the rain. Our dams have been steadily dwindling ever since 2015, probably. Um, that was our last good rain. So we've kind of had seven years of drought. Guy Rogers, local resident and senior journalist at the Herald and Weekend Post, has been reporting on the region's water woes for well over a decade. There was quite a concerted effort by the previous council to identify problem areas. Um, but, you know, then the council changed, uh, the leadership changed. And then there's, then there's a bit of rain and so they take the eye of the ball. In 2018, um, we were also on the edge of day zero and the ailing infrastructure in, in our water system was never fixed. Siabulela Mama, activist and member of the Nelson Mandela Bay Water Crisis Committee, is critical of the current Metro administration, a cobbled together multi-party coalition led by the ANC. The situation is still here. We still have a coalition government that also faces this same political crisis where people are discussing who should be a city manager, who should not be a city manager, who should lead the coalition and who should not lead. And there's no serious debate and, and, and serious solutions around the water crisis. The Water Crisis Committee is looking to be a part of the solution for the region's ongoing water problems by giving a voice to the local communities. We hear what businesses say, 
um, we hear what the government, the state is saying, um, but we don't hear what communities are saying. And you only need to spend a few hours talking to people in the townships to realize they feel unheard. When it comes to the time of, to the time of voting, they do come to people. But when it comes to the problems people are facing, they, you won't see them. Because I'm saying to you, for the first four or five months in my area, Ward 46 and Ward 47, not a single councillor called a meeting. The metro's water supply comes from a series of dams in the region, with the Churchill and Mpofu dams on the Kroma River supplying the bulk of the bay's water. But these dams are so empty that the municipality is literally slurping up the last drops of muddy water to meet the demand, which is currently about 280 megalitres per day. The municipality is planning to um, drill boreholes in, in August. Um, this is in August. Why we on the verge, we're on the edge of this crisis now. But besides the planned drilling, there is a glimmer of hope for the Nelson Mandela Bay Metro, and it comes all the way from the Free State Eastern Cape border. This is the Kharib Dam, second largest dam in South Africa. It supplies water to parts of the Val, the city of Bloemfontein, but also it's a very important source for Nelson Mandela Bay. In the 70s, an 82-kilometer irrigation tunnel was built from the dam all the way to the Great Fish River to supply the central eastern Cape with additional water. In the 1990s, the system was extended. From the southern tip of the Kharib Dam, millions of litres of water get transferred on a daily basis as far as Nelson Mandela Bay. Question is, is it enough? From this intake tower, some 20 kilometers upstream from the dam wall, the water travels through the irrigation tunnel. And from the Great Fish River, it is transferred via a series of channels, tunnels and rivers, all the way to the Neutredacht Water Treatment Works, about an hour's drive outside Kerberga. We are met by Acting Chief Executive for Amatola Water, Tsiabulela Koyo. This is where we are, coming all the way from Harib. The first phase of the Neutredacht water transfer scheme brought 70 megalitres of water per day to the metro. By 2018, the amount of water doubled. And as of the end of March this year, 210 megalitres of water is now transferred to the bay on a daily basis. So with phase three, how long did that take for you to increase that capacity? This project started in 2017. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was supposed to have run for about 44 months, but there was a number of challenges during the implementation. Yes, there were many delays, yeah, eh? Yeah, there were, there were many delays, funding issues, availability of funds uh, to continue with the project. But getting all this water to the plant is only part of the challenge. At the moment, it only services the eastern parts of the metro. So over 100 suburbs on the western side of the bay that solely rely on the dams are left dry. There's a quite an important element, a place called the Kwanabushle pump station, which is being refurbished. Once that is complete, and that's due to be completed uh, end of this month, um, then we can transfer water right across the metro. So it could happen just in time? It could happen just in time. So we just got to push out the days, push out the days by really cutting our consumption. But that's easier said than done. An 11th hour water awareness drive from the municipality has not been very effective. Surprisingly, they're expecting residents to drastically cut down consumption when the metro seems to be flippant in its own approach to conserving water. We haven't been fixing leaks. Uh, there hasn't been a response to, to communities when they report leaks that run on for months and months and months at a time. When we're facing a water crisis. Absolutely. And Guy, let's just take a pause on that one about the leaks. How big of a contribution is this? Yeah, so my understanding is that nearly 30% of our water, the water that we get, is being lost to leaks. This means that of the 280 megalitres of water that Nelson Mandela Bay uses per day, a staggering 80 megalitres of water is lost every single day. 
There's a lot of anger that we're in this situation. But having said that, we now have the situation, of course, where the minister has come on board, where um, the authority is talking to private sector and they seem to be doing the right thing. Of course, time's running out, even as we speak. I mean, uh, time's running out. Neither the Department of Water Affairs and Sanitation nor the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality responded to our repeated request for interviews. While the future of the Bay's water remains uncertain, for many, the challenges of living without running water is an ongoing daily struggle. Mm. Not a single drop of water must go to waste. It's work. That's why we work. The dog can... It's a workout. <laughs> I can tell you that. The big question is, will the lessons learned here today be remembered when the next drought strikes? Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.